Welcome to Above the Garage. Hi, friends. Welcome to our latest show, The Crowded Room on Apple Plus TV. We got the screeners for these episodes yesterday. So starting next week with episode four, we'll be releasing them the day the episode drops on Apple Plus. So on Fridays. For these first three, they will be dropping throughout this week on various days as we get them recorded and ended. All right, let's do our round of introductions and dive in. Hi, I'm Rachel. Hi, I'm Kimberly. And I'm Kate. So what are you guys thinking so far overall? It's really interesting. I have a lot of questions. Yeah. (laughs) Already. Do you know, um, so going in, I decided not to learn about the real life story that's related to this, just so the show could be a little more suspenseful. Yeah. Uh, Are you guys in the same boat? I did read one article and it did reveal something that was not necessarily revealed in this episode, but it did make me start to look for things. So I don't know. I was just curious what the state of everybody's knowledge was going on. Right. No, pretty much nothing. I it, it, It's based on a book. Yeah. Yeah. It's based on a book. So yeah, I, I obviously I hadn't read the book and I'd never, I didn't hear about the book and I actually wasn't aware that this series was coming, but I love, um, Tom Holland. So I'm really, really interested to see him in something different. And this is definitely, this definitely is not Marvel. This is a t- totally yeah. different world for him. So I'm really excited to see, um, see what it's all about. Yeah. So yeah. And obviously the cast is stellar too. Like you said, I love Tom Holland. I love Amanda Seyfried. I love Amy Rossum from Shameless. There are more people coming in later episodes. Yeah. The only thing I knew was that Obviously, it was based on a book. I actually didn't realize it was that book was based on like a real life trial. The book is called The Minds of Billy Milligan by Daniel Keyes. And I chose not to read it while watching just, you know, to be able to experience it on the show. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Without knowing right. what's going to happen. Yeah, it'll be interesting to read after the fact. And it's also different, I think, to be doing a show that uh, involves, you know, human beings that exist a little more sensitive in the yeah mm-hmm. that, there was a big emphasis on that as well from apple plus that the creator of the show you know really wants the mental health aspect of it to be the focus and that's kind of the genesis for why this why he decided to do this show so mm-hmm. it is interesting and look forward to learning more all right let's dive in then oh i also just want to say i really enjoy the cinematography and the costumes and the uh the setting and everything of this show so far yes yeah. same yeah, there were definitely shots that blew my mind as I was watching it. Yeah. Yeah, you can tell it's really well thought out and like the production is massive um, right. on this one. Right, and I we just saw Tom Holland saying that it took 10 months to shoot and it was really like, it really drained him of, yeah. of everything, so. Yeah, mm-hmm. 10 months for a TV show also sounds... um you know only 10 episodes sounds like quite a long time you know yeah yeah it was exhausting and he's also a producer so he was Mm. really involved both acting and behind the scenes yeah yeah i think it's usually more like six months so the pilot episode opens on the new york city subway a very cool shot of danny in the seat and ariana in the reflection and danny is looking nervous as hell when she tells him not to look at it and he doesn't have to go through with this so it's pretty clear there's a gun in the bag on his lap He's definitely giving off don't go near me vibes, subway vibes, because he's obviously scared and uncomfortable with what he thinks he's got to do next. They exit the subway under Radio City Music Hall, and you can tell from the marquee and the clothes everybody's wearing that we're in like the 70s, 80s-ish. And once again, they use a reflection and a Sinatra sign to see their mark and then set out to follow him. The sheer number of extras in 70s attire on the New York City street amazes me. Yeah. I wonder how many were hired for this. Yeah. The clothes, the hair, the cars. It was all I was I was taking it all in. Like even like the the marquee with the um I mean Sinatra being up there and and just really setting the time. Also, yeah. you mentioned the the reflections and I um I don't know if you guys sort of got a shining girls vibe from from this one. Yeah. Oh my god. So much Mm -hmm. from a lot in this episode. Yeah. (laughs) Right. A lot. And, and so back then I was really paying attention a lot to reflections and mirrors and stuff like that. So I started doing that and there's a lot in this show as well. And the very first shot of Danny is his reflection in the subway car. And then you, Mm -hmm. the very first shot of Ariana is also her reflection across from him. And then um, when he's looking in the reflection at the radio city music hall, it's split. 
So there's yeah. like a double image of him twice, like like as, he, as he's looking straight on and then he turns his head and there's another like split image of him. So right. I'm like, hmm, that's, I mean, I think it's all really interesting. I think it's intentional. Yeah, it's really very cool. Yeah, I noticed yeah. too, later in the episode, there's a fractured mirror where you see um, multiple of his images. Anyway, but but like mm-hmm. a lot of this was also used in Shining Girls, which was also on Apple, mm-hmm. which is funny. It also has like the similar house and it yep, goes yep. between <laughs> it goes between the house and like the police station mm-hmm. like it did in Shining Girls. There's just like a whole lot of similarities between the two that were a lot of parallels glaring this episode yeah. and obviously the time. I do have to say yeah seeing the amazing cinematography just in the first scene made me really excited. Mm-hmm. Ah, she's our mm-hmm. resident co- collage maker. <laughs> I, I love how you see the beauty in those shots though. Yeah, I remember when we talked to um, Peter Solit um, about um, Your Honor. I think it might have been episode one where they were talking about the mirror shots and like the reflection shot and like yeah, how it's hard. Yeah, how hard it is to do those. So when I see those, I really appreciate them a lot more now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was the director of that episode, and he said that they actually had to paint the entire room black to get the shot where yeah. you can see Brian Cranston across the way, but also the reflection of the you know person that's visiting him so same thing it's the more you learn the more you notice Mm -hmm. and it's already frustrating to me knowing nothing about anything at this point nothing about his motivation that it seems like it's ariana who planned this murder in the middle of the daylight yeah in the middle of the city but she's making danny pull the trigger Mm -hmm. however he totally freezes and she has to take the gun and then he stupidly picks it up afterwards after she's shot the guy in the shoulder and takes off running he picks it up and starts running the police get there quickly they're chasing him and he still doesn't let go of the gun he's got his gun in hand all the way home i wrote down seriously why don't you like as you run put the gun in your pocket or something bro like oh my god anything he'd probably shoot himself if he did that but like just oh yeah <laughs> I didn't think about the picking up of the gun was so stupid after she had done the shooting Mm -hmm. just even touching it even though he already had right I mean he did have fingerprints on it already yes but it just makes you look so much guiltier to be the one that has the gun in hand and you're running like he goes in and picks it up again and I'm like (laughs) I had the same thought I was like why (laughs) Yeah, and so already we have the fractured mirror. The second he gets home, he punches the mirror and you see his reflection. You see multiple reflections of him in the fragments of the mirror. Another man living there shoves him against the wall and demands to know where Ariana is and what he did. Dude very suspiciously has passports in his back pocket and a roll of hundos ready for a situation like this. Tells the kid to take the passports and go find his father. And still he's got the gun in hand. Danny's not too bothered, though. He wanders around the house until dark, at least burning a notebook and some other papers, but then we hear the sirens. And again, I noted that this house interior reminds me so much of Shining Girls that if you told me it was the same house, I'd be like, yeah, all right, that makes sense. Yeah. It's the Apple Plus house. (laughs) Um, Yeah. And then he walks outside to the sound of police yelling, hands in the air, and he cooperates, gets down on the ground. Did not really attempt an escape. If this is the same time, it's the same time as when he told him to run. Yeah, must be. Because it was right after the shooting. I think so. so. Yeah, he just didn't run. Okay. Yeah, he just decided to stay, yeah. stay there. But it's interesting because, like, obviously in this first episode, we haven't seen, he says, go to your father. I'm assuming he's not meaning the stepfather that we see, like, in the episode. Hope I not. was confused by that, too. Because I was like, his father, is he talking about that asshole <laughs> Right. who is, is yeah. his stepfather or is there another like an actual father that he's talking about so I, is that yeah. just supposed to be a question for us now I don't know if we're I don't think we're supposed to know well it's definitely a question for it us, is a question <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's t- intended to be one it could just be the stepfather yeah. and that's why they've introduced him because mm-hmm. you know we met him and learned a lot about him so uh-huh. yeah he could just be the only other person in his life available mm-hmm the next scene are the police breaking down the case as they know it. It sounds like they think he's the shooter, but they know that there is a girl involved and a landlord involved. Two people got shot. Neither was life threatening. The guy in the shoulder and another lady got shot in the leg. But the detective obviously wants Danny to be a, I don't know if this was psychopath or serial killer that he was kind of going after here. I don't know that he uses the word. He had a vague comment. Wasn't it something like, um, I think he's one of them, or or um, I think we got one. He says, "What if we caught one?" Which yes. is a pretty it's a pretty telling question that he, you know, he's excited by this and he wants mm-hmm. Danny to be guilty and not only be guilty, but this whole other level of 
I don't know if he's going for psychopathic or a serial killer, but the other two are missing. And he also implies that, you know, Danny probably may have killed Ariana and the landlord. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just like, obvious he's kind of out to get him. Another Shining Girl similarity because the police in that one suck too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that she was uh, Amanda Seyfried character. Raya was introduced as a professor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she's not a cop then. She's just like a... Someone that's very good at interrogating and getting information from people, maybe? I think that it was around this time in the 70s, 80s that profiling became a thing, like forensic. Right, gotcha. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And so that, you know, you can look at the crime and and tell what kind of person might have done this, what their motivation, et cetera, et cetera. I think this was all becoming a big thing back then. Mm. And I guess she may have written a book or something to that effect. She's an expert on that kind of personality Mm -hmm. and that's why they're bringing her in because they think that he is a deviant personality that's right you know Mm -hmm. driving this that's my understanding with what we've seen but i agree with that yeah and she's not so quick to judge him she wants to actually know the facts and what he said why he said he shot somebody at rockefeller center the detective tells her that he said they just wanted to scare someone though he won't say who or why that was interesting because it's when she said, or he said that they just wanted to scare him because yeah. it, it seemed like a lot more. I don't think that's true. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it seemed a lot more um, violent than that. It, um, deliberate. Like the way she comes up to him at the time and right. shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. Like, yeah. yeah, I don't think it was just scaring him. <laughs> if she had the gun, I would believe that she had told him that story because she's obviously using him. Uh, not obviously, but it seems like she's probably using him. So if she had the gun, I could see her saying you know, we're just going to scare him and then going there and shooting him. But the fact that he had the gun means she had to have told him, you know, that she wanted him dead. She couldn't have really yeah, I think so. lied about that or it wouldn't have happened. Mm-hmm. So I think he is lying in that particular statement. And maybe that's why he froze. Because when it happens, like he, he points the gun at the target, but he freezes. And right. like, and that's when she yells at him to shoot him. Yeah. I like the intro sequence a lot. The music and the painted scenes ending with the house with the light on and the wind moving the trees in the sky. I like that with the uh, with our learning that he is a very good artist shortly here. Oh, yeah, the opening sequence. I was I had a note on that, too. I loved it. Yeah. I'm a big sucker for opening sequences, for like like in- intros for shows. And when I saw that, I was just transfixed. It was so gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah, they matter. After the intro, Raya's waiting for him in an interrogation room. She asks him the same questions as the police. Where's Ariana? Where's Yitzhak? But she tries to convince him that she's actually trying to help him, which we could already tell the police are not. And maybe he believes her. She wants to go back to when he first met Ariana and Yitzhak. Like, she very much wants every piece of information that he can give her about everything. And then we're back with Danny at his house in high school. His stepdad's a dick. His mom is Emmy Rossum from Shameless. And she's nice, despite smoking the bacon with her cigarette. But this was the 70s, so it would be stranger if she weren't, probably. <laughs> my uh, my high school boyfriend had those exact bowls, by the way, like that plate set. But I digress. Dad's drinking his milk straight from the carton as he talks shit about Danny. Sleeping in till late, getting food made for him, etc. And then he corners him in his bedroom and you can see Danny is very uncomfortable around him. He's avoiding eye contact until the dad like screams at him, demands it. And then he's whispering shit to him when Danny's mom comes in and tells him to take his hands off her kid. Calls him a piece of shit, but whatever's going on here, it's not enough for her to leave him to protect the kid, which, you know, is disappointing. Mm-hmm. You want to know like why? That's always hard. I mean, I think, and especially when you're looking back in time, women are so much more reliant on right. the, the man that they've chosen. <laughs> Not always, but um, because I think this is around the time of women's sort of coming out and being more independent. And, and um, she works. Though. Did she mention it? Yeah, she mentioned a job, but that still doesn't mean that she feels like she can support herself and her kid or no there's still like reasons of course and it's easier to say from the outside you know watching you should leave him but yeah she should leave him and she hasn't sure he says something like that to her too like you're stuck with me i'm the best you can you chose me or i forget how he put it but but like he's sort of throwing it in her face like she says you're pitiful and he's like well you chose me and i'm the best you can have or whatever so what does that make you you know it's just such an asshole yeah i mean but there's no like pretension of like love between them or even a lot of times you see the mom at least like have some sort of thing for the dad and in this case that doesn't exist 
I was at least glad to see that she tried to stop the violence going on between him and her son because oh, yeah. sometimes women aren't even like they people turn a blind eye feel like they can't even do that they they feel too scared yeah. so at least she did try to do that I like that right I was like, he said, like, when he was waking up late, I'm pretty sure it was like eight o'clock, I think they said. I was like, damn, like, that's not late, bro. <laughs> I know. I thought of you. And me. If I didn't have kids, I would sleep in super late. And also, she made him amazing BLT sandwich for lunch for school. I did not get BLT sandwiches for lunch. I got Vegemite sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, no, my kids don't get peeled some sandwiches. That is nice. I mean, I think, you know, when my, my mother was making lunches back when I was a kid and stuff, and it was never BLTs. It was like, right. you know, peanut butter and jelly or yeah. you know, turkey and Swiss or something like something simple. Yeah. yeah. Same. I'm a mom and that's what I make. And the bacon looked good. It did. It looked like that nice crispy bacon. It looked really <laughs> delicious. Mm -hmm. We have two friends. That, that like one of them likes like burnt bacon and the other one likes like barely cooked bacon so Ugh. i've become aware of a very wide range of bacon opinions okay at school to be honest i was expecting worse bullying too i which is sad i guess but he's got a good friend johnny apparently another friend mike we haven't met yet that even plays a varsity sports uh there's one asshole calling him a freak for no reason except existing in the same hallway we later learn his name is bill but Danny seems pretty happy overall, and they're going to a party tonight. Later in the day outside, we see Danny is an incredible artist. He's drawing someone he misses, Adam. They look like brothers, and in a minute, he implies to Raya that they were actually identical twins. And Johnny and Danny talk a little bit about grief and how it comes in waves, how it could feel like you're drowning. Apparently, Johnny's dad is gone, presumably dead as well. Yeah. But this is, introduces the whole mystery of what happened to Adam because Raya offers to talk to him about it and all we see is a brief memory of a farm before he tells her no, he doesn't want to talk about Adam. I didn't really pay attention to it at first when um, Johnny was doing his magic in the hallway, but then like I understand why they showed us that now because of like what happens later. <laughs> yeah, later on it comes into play. You know, usually they don't show you something that you you know that they're not going to use later yeah exactly right mm -hmm. right yeah yeah and yet same as you i overlooked it i guess i thought it was just establishing that they were kind of on the outside of your normal high school uh jocks etc you know yeah right he was interested in magic which is cool like unique and interesting um but not like mainstream but you're right it was more than that mm -hmm. and damn he's a very good artist as well i was very impressed I was going to say I was impressed with the magic, but yes, also the art. Yeah. yeah. The artwork was amazing. Especially watercolors. It it's always seems like that's, I don't, I'm not, I can't draw anything, but it always seems to me like watercolors would be harder to control because it's just, you know, but I think that's why it's so artistic because they can kind of blend it and, and do cool things with it. And, and it just like, you see them starting out or, or you see him drawing and it's, it looks just like you know smudges or whatever and then they show the after and it's just gorgeous it's like yeah. you know all the layers to it and it's like wow yeah i mean they're actually i kind of had the impression that they're actually pretty good at making it look easy almost but like it's not easy and i could never do it but i like the way that they show you kind of the steps mm -hmm. but if i tried those steps it would not end remotely the same same and then we're at the high school party and mike basketball player extraordinaire is introduced and he's so excited to see danny I'm used to kids being assholes in shows like this because I did not expect the friendly welcome at the party. Did you guys? I, like, I kept thinking that the party was going to be a disaster and something horrible was going to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought someone was going to come over and be like, hey, you're not welcome here. Get out. Yeah. <laughs> right. Or this is a big joke all about, you know, just to embarrass you. There's not even a party. Whatever. Yeah. Because Danny had that. Danny even said something earlier, like I wasn't invited or something like that. And it's his friend said there's signs up everywhere. Everybody's invited. Yeah. Yeah. Even when they knocked on the front door and like nobody was answering her, there was like a whole moment that had, I think, was probably built to build like the tension. Like what's going to happen? yeah you know what's the deal with this party yeah but nothing it's just a nice happy party danny eyes annabelle the hottest of the hot per mic but danny opts for the keg over walking over and talking to her the music in the show is great and yeah everybody's just really enjoying themselves dancing and happy and annabelle actually approaches danny on the outskirts of the party looking for marijuana later which of course danny doesn't actually have but he will set out on that mission next 
Somebody runs up with sparklers to her, which startles him. I'm absolutely not a doctor, but it seems like maybe he's on the spectrum or something, but managing like really well, like Mm. very high functioning. Could be. But again, I have absolutely no medical knowledge. I just notice, you know, how he seems startled and avoids eye contact and stuff. But Mm. so far, he seems to be living a pretty happy life at school with his friends. And there's a really cool night shot of the tree shadows as he walks down the street. I love that. I know. It's so cool. Oh, God. That gave me chills. That was so cool. Because, like, yeah. he's walking at a normal pace, but it's like a time lapse thing with the shadows going over him. Yeah. And it was, I just thought that effect was so cool. Yeah. I also just love the sparklers. Mm-hmm. I know. The same with all the kids and the sparklers and how happy he looked when. Um, you know, Annabelle was there coming over to him and paying attention to him. I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Aww. And then I'm like, this isn't going to last very long, is it? No, probably not. I know. Right. <laughs> yeah, one of those fleeting moments where of, of joy and yeah. I, either either with the girl or just because of what happens immediately after he gets home. But yeah, it's it's like at least he had a moment of walking home and feeling really good and feeling really happy. Right. Yeah. I wonder if this episode is... The last we see of any happiness, but it's nice to have had it. At the end of the street, Danny runs into his lovely stepfather who wants him to hang out. He's just hanging out in a van on the street. But Danny begs off with the old homework excuse. Not before he sees Yitzhak for the first time, though. Pull up to the old ghost house. He doesn't know if Ariana was with him yet back then. He only saw Yitzhak, he tells Raya. Yitzhak had a really interesting line here. I mean, I know that he, I don't, I'm not Yitzhak. I'm sorry. His, his stepfather uh-huh. had a really interesting line because uh, Danny says, did somebody move into the, the old ghost house or the ghost house or something like that? His, his stepfather looks in that direction and says, who are you talking about? Or, or like, or something like that. Hmm. It just made me, I don't know. I'm already questioning. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Danny's reality. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a bit. So I, I'm I'm curious about about moments like that. Like like is that something Danny saw that his stepfather didn't see? Right. Yeah. Big question mark there. That's a good question. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Raya's being a little bit racist here, asking if Yitzhak seemed too exotic, out of place for Danny's neighborhood. Uh, then we get to meet him up close. Mike introduces the trio to Yitzhak. It learns he's from Israel. He's opening the boarding house, it seems. And Danny thinks Ariana is in the house at this point. And I mean, not many days have passed, right? So I was surprised when he says, I don't know if Ariana was there yet, like the night before. And then the next day we know that she's there. It was strange that he said, I don't know if she's there yet, unless more time has passed. I Like, what was your take on the high school part of this episode? How many days did you think it was just like a couple of consecutive days? Or did you think more time passed? Well, if if you if I think about the story with the girl with Annabelle, yeah, because he meets her at the party and then he draws her and then he gives it tries to give it to her. I thought the next day. No, no, no. They have a date. No, because there's a date in the middle. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. I, I'm forgetting because because there's a whole thing in the middle where um he and his his friends try to get weed. So the passage of time. Let's see. I don't know how how much time that took them. For a few days, I feel like. Um, between the party and between when he tries to give Annabelle the picture. Right. But are you feeling like it's like a few days or are you feeling like there's some weeks in the middle that we've missed? Yeah, I think it's, I think definitely think it's probably like a few like days. Maybe. Yeah, I can see a few days. Yeah. Right. So then I thought it was kind of strange that he was like, I don't know if she was there, but three days later, I know she was. But whatever. Yeah. Uh, okay. Mm. Uh, Raya tells him that there were some statistically unusual attacks in the area at the time after Yitzhak and Ariana get there. Still unsolved. And Danny jumps to the conclusion that she's accusing Ariana, though I initially thought she was accusing Yitzhak, but... Yeah, I was confused by, yeah, both both of what they're meaning. Like, I, I right. wasn't sure what um, Raya was getting at, like, who she was accusing. But either way. Yeah. I mean, she's getting at that it's them one of them at least if not both so back in the 70s johnny has a plan for danny capturing annabelle's heart marijuana it does seem like a solid strategy and how hard can it be to find weed in the 70s or grass as my dad and danny call it but not only does johnny want to acquire some grass he wants to deal it that's a whole nother level buy an ounce sell the rest and danny's stepfather seems like the perfect mark because he seems very forgiving don't you guys think (laughs) like the worst idea ever 
Uh, but ATMs have entered the scene and Johnny's convinced they can pull the money out and pay it back without stepdad Marlon noticing. Step one, Marlon gets passed out drunk every Saturday night. Check. Danny sneaks past him to where he keeps his secret code taped to his Heidi Whitey's drawer. Now for the pulling of the wallet out of the pocket as the national anthem triumphantly plays in the background when he succeeds. I enjoyed that. With the like flag on the TV. It's an all-American feat. The awe at the ATM machine is fun, though. Like, it's this futuristic machine they've never seen that we're very used to, you know? I loved his his wonder about it. Like, oh, the, the yeah. sounds it made. It made these sounds. <laughs> like, looking into it. Like a magical thing. Yeah, it was really funny. And when it actually spits out the cash, their excitement is palpable. Did you guys notice that they bought a handcuffs at the chemist? I was, And they threw away the keys. And I was like, what the fuck are they going to use those for? I thought that was part of Johnny's magic thing oh yeah it could have been a magic trick yeah you're correct although i i think it's dumb to throw the keys away even if you're uh yeah <laughs> doing a magic trick but um you want to have a backup plan maybe they made them nicer back then but they're pretty cheap and you could probably just break them easily but still weird yeah mm-hmm. i also find it weird that they sell handcuffs at a chemist but anyways <laughs> It was probably a toy, <laughs> like, like you know, like a kid toy handcuff thing. Yeah, yeah, like joke area with like... These aren't like, you know, law enforcement issued handcuffs. I think in this scene also um, we learned that his mom is maybe a nurse because she's working a double shift at the hospital. Yeah, she's working an overnight shift. Yeah. Maybe she's working doubles to try and get away from the asshole. <laughs> yeah. But that kind of sucks too, because obviously Danny is at home. But right, and if she's not there, then he's alone with with the stepfather. Yeah, yeah. Or she could just be trying to, you never know, earn enough money to like get out of there. I don't know. Oh, that would be great. Right. Yeah. Now it's time for the next easy step: find the drug dealer Angelo in the park. And then Angelo scares the shit out of them, but they get the ounce for a hundred bucks. We know the cost, Kimberly. He offers them a few options. Colombian, Panama red, Arabian black. And then he makes fun of Danny when he picks Panama red and he slams him against the wall as Mike fast talks him about a new stream of income from the rich white kids that want pot. And he lets him go. Mike and Danny run off. Good for Johnny for standing his ground and telling Angelo, uh, we need the weed. Yeah. I was impressed with Johnny. Good work, sir. Mm-hmm. But it's shitty of the dealer to be such an asshole to them. Just because he can. Are we surprised? Mm, a little i find pot dealers to be rather friendly and nice but oh really well I, the guys in the 70s must have been unfriendly then i mean back in college <laughs> and it's it's sad that danny's like also just the type of person that gets picked on so much i feel like that's mm. obviously a big theme even though he seems like a nice kid yeah so far Next day, Danny puts a few dime bags in his locker for him and his friends, and Johnny grabs a blue backpack to deal out of at lunch. Sells it all in an afternoon. Impressive. And then Danny gets his chance with Annabelle and shoots his shot. Eden is such a bitch. Oh, my God. Her friend that is standing with her. Man. Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yet, despite that, Danny gets the nerve to ask Annabelle out, and she says yes. Right before the school asshole crashes their convo and pushes Danny yet again to the ground. And Animal does not tell him, Bill is his name, to fuck off. And then when Danny gets inside, the principal's waiting to make him open his locker, looking for the weed that he had told Annabelle in front of Eden that he had in his locker. Actually, he told Eden, too. Mm-hmm. As Eden and Bill watch on, so it's obvious that they turned him in. Tattled. I mean, he was be- he was flapping his gums about that to-, right. to anybody who could hear him. True. And he was, like, defending it hard, you know, and she's like, you don't have any. He's like, yes, I do, I do. You know, and you're like, no, don't do that. So naive. <laughs> it's in my locker but seriously like what kind of person would turn and do that to him it's so shitty totally bunch of twats yeah so are annabelle and bill supposed to be dating or is bill just like wanting to date her and he's just being a complete yeah i wasn't sure i was like is this a does she have a boyfriend that she didn't tell mention or yeah i had the same question like i do think they are dating but then yeah maybe not or maybe he just feels he has some kind of like possession and ownership of her because he thinks he's like hot shit right and like she's hot shit <laughs> that they're supposed to be together yeah it could be because she was the one she was the one who approached danny at the party and she was being very flirtatious and suggestive and everything so 
I mean, I would understand Danny picking up on those vibes yeah. and thinking that she was into him or, you know, that there was at least something that there that he could pursue. Yeah. So like it was sort of, you know, I would be a little bit taken aback and shocked in Danny's position with this guy coming up, being all possessive over her and like grabbing her like she like he owns her. Right. Aggressively. Yeah. And then he apologizes like, I'm sorry, Bill. Like, like, I didn't realize she was your girlfriend or so like he didn't say that, but he's he apologized. Right. I don't know. I don't like Bill. I, I don't know. Yeah, I guess they're not dating, but exactly. He definitely has this possessive like attitude over her. Uh huh. But yay for Danny's friends coming to his rescue. They saved him. Mike saw Bill and Eden talking and correctly guessed the topic and got Johnny to move the weed. At first I was like, why does Johnny have to move it? And then I was like, oh, they don't know his locker combination, but Johnny's a magician. So who needs a locker combination? And then it magically appears in Danny's pocket. So I just want to say I think Johnny's an excellent magician. I'm impressed. Mm -hmm. Nice sleight of hand. Bill's obviously in trouble. Principal at the end of the scene. As he should be. And now for the big date. Danny is fairly adorable when Annabelle tells him she would have hung out with him without the pot. I'm not sure that that's the case, especially after the following day. But they do have a a cute date and probably like one of the highlights of Danny's life to date. And Mm -hmm. she initiates the makeout sesh. Mm -hmm. I love the moment when she like goes to kiss her and like she's still swinging. (laughs) He's just like, they just like peck real quick. Yeah. It's so funny, too, because, like, Tom Holland is obviously, like, in his late 20s, and it's funny to me how he can pass as a teenage boy. He's very yeah. youthful. He definitely passes. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's they've gotten better about that in modern times for having more adult people play. Um, no more Fonzies. I yeah. was watching a movie over the weekend where it's like literally everybody in high school was 35 years old. And I was like, they, yeah. they even have like wrinkles and stuff. It's like they yeah. weren't yeah. even trying that hard to make them look youthful. It's like when you rewatch Grace and you're like, damn, these people are like 50 already. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? like they're supposed to be in high school. Yeah. Tom Holland definitely is youthful enough to pull off high school still. Definitely. I was thinking too that it's like hard to film high school shows because you have to film really fast because people grow up, you know? Yeah. That's what happened on Stranger Things. Exactly. They're going to be like 30 by the time that damn last season comes out. <laughs> Those kids got huge in between seasons. It was like, wow, I don't. Uh-huh. <laughs> they had major yeah. growth spurts. So that's what happens when you cast authentically authentic children. And right. yeah. the ages they're mm-hmm. supposed to be is, yeah, they grow. They, they right. get bigger. Their voice changes. All those things. Yeah. This whole scene, too, I thought was beautiful. Like, the light, the cinematography, and the shot of them kissing and just on the swing. Like, it was so, it was just a beautiful I love the cinematography. Mm-hmm. The whole yeah. episode so far. It's very it's really gorgeous. Like, beautiful to watch. Yeah, and then that night he spends the night painting a beautiful picture of her and brings it to school the next morning. And then Eden, I hate Eden. Anyway, Eden cuts in again, this time with Annabelle's apparent approval, telling Danny it's over with Annabelle and hitting his drawing to the ground before the principal approaches with a joint, calling it Danny's. Where did he get that? Is that like from Annabelle? Did she turn him in? He put it in the letter with the photo and sealed it up. Oh, he was giving her the joint yeah. and it fell out. She pushed, um, slapped it down and it fell out. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, I hated Eden in the scene, but also what the fuck with Annabelle? I'm sorry for my language, but like, what the heck happened? It just, yeah. I, I was like, is she really just a bitch who, who's flipped that quickly on him or did something happen? She looks like maybe she has some regret feeling, but that's not enough, you know? I feel like it's the case of, you know, when you see those teenage shows where like the popular girl likes the nerdy guy and then like her friends are like what are you doing with that guy and then right, you know all of a sudden they stop dating and then yeah or maybe there was a bill influence in there too even though he wasn't oh, in yeah. that scene uh-huh. but like you know maybe there was some fear going on like the th- he threatened her somehow like you're my girl or something i don't know maybe, like i don't know what happened but Probably. it's just for her to flip that strongly against him and i just felt so bad for him like after he paints that beautiful portrait and he just uh it was so crushing like that whole high school heartbreak thing and and being rejected like that it's so awful 
Yeah, I mean, it's either like really mean on her part that she did it all as like a plan because she's the one that like initiated making. Yeah, it all of it was right? her. Yeah, everything. So it was either like really mean on her part, or I guess she got peer pressured into bailing. But even then, you know, it's shitty. Also, when they first um, start that scene and he's up against the lockers with his back against the lockers, there's another reflection scene with where there's like a dual double image of him, like a full body double image of him. Uh, that was another cool shot. Now everything spirals very quickly. Danny can't take the principal confronting him. He takes off running. When he gets home, he hears a voicemail from his stepdad blaming his mom for the missing $100. And then when he walks outside, Bill and his friends chase him and kick the shit out of him until Yitzhak steps in and teaches them a lesson. I would not mess with him. I suspect Yitzhak, the hero, is not going to be a real hero in Danny's life in the end. But in this moment, he sure looks like one to Danny. Back with Raya, she points out how strange it is that this guy was in the right place at the right time and bothered to step in and save him. As we watch high school Danny walk into the house for the first time, covered in blood, and Ariana's waiting in the kitchen. Yitzhak was pretty good. Like, he's had some fight training. He was like, bam, headbutt, fuck you up. Yeah, I was impressed. A couple of them, a uh, couple of them were smart enough to run off before they got the Yitzhak treatment, but he got like three of them, right? Yeah, I think he got three, and then the rest ran off. And then Raya implies he never went home after that. Danny keeps insisting he doesn't have any idea where Ariana is now or if she's with Yitzhak. And Raya makes it clear to him that if she doesn't show up, he's very likely to go to prison. Is he really willing to take the blame for all of this? And then she gets aggressive. People disappear around Danny. What happened to Yitzhak? What happened to Adam? Danny, where did they all go? That was unexpected. Very ominous, too. Yeah. The way she said, where did they all go? It's like, "Mm, Yeah. Being that none of us have actually seen the next episode yet, we will find out more very shortly. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Are you guys liking it so far? It sounds like I do you like it. Yeah, I'm. I'm really like liking it. it so far. I think it's, yeah. it's very cool. Like we talked about, the cinematography is gorgeous, and I love it when they pay that close attention to detail like that. And um, I, it seems like it's going to be a ride. Like this. Like I remember yes. having that same feeling about Shining Girls. I knew. I hadn't read the book, same here, so I knew nothing going into it, and I just had that that sort yeah. of excited feeling like this is this is going to be cool, and um, so I'm really I'm I'm uh, I've got you know I'm holding on to it. I have some some speculation. I won't go into it. We'll see where this show goes, but like I'm like really excited, and I uh, can't wait to talk more with you guys about it. Yeah. There are also a lot of flashes that made me feel like a lot of crazy shit was going to happen, like Ariana crying, being beaten up, and then she was running down the road. And then we saw, like, I think it must have been his twin with the firefly, the drowning, the kid driving on the farm or someone driving to a farm. And then there was a few earlier on as well with the flashing. I think it was also Yitzhak, like, um, having his, like, hand over Danny's mouth and, like, pushing him up against the wall or something like that. So it seems like there's a lot of stuff going to come. I don't know if they were memories, but um, or if we're just going to see them as the show progresses. Like the one about Adam was probably a memory. I would yeah. assume. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. I guess that's a wrap on our first episode of The Crowded Room. Come back in a couple of days. We'll release our second and third episodes. And then... From there on, on Fridays, we will release our discussions of the episode that drops that day on Apple+. Plus. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. Bye.